Well, basically it offers us a new view, a new way of looking at the universe. I mean, much of modern astrophysics and modern astronomy has come from expanding our vision of the universe from beyond just the optical band, which we see with our eyes, to other wave bands like the radio or the ultra ultraviolet or the, 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 the X-rays. And now the most recent addition has been gamma rays sort of expanding the band over which we can see the universe by sort of a couple of additional decades in frequency. And each time we've opened up a new wave band, sort of new phenomena have been visible of the universe. So it's just expanding our, our knowledge and our vision of the universe. Gamma rays are made whenever gamma, normal, normal light is made from hot bodies. It's just hot stars. And we know that there's nothing hot enough in the universe, in the current universe, to make gamma rays. So gamma rays come, uh, are made when elementary particles are accelerated to very high energies, when they collide, when they decay, when they interact. So the goals of this science is to understand these high energy particles in the universe, how they propagate, how they are made, how they influence the universe. And we in fact know that they influence the evolution of the universe much, much more strongly than we previously thought. Now, if you sort of ask about the biggest discoveries to be made, uh, probably one of the biggest discoveries to be made would be to see signs of dark matter particles annihilating at the center of our galaxy. I mean, this is one of the major science goals of all these experiments and would be sort of the most striking sign of new physics uh, which we can discover. Well, basically, if, if dark matter is so-called neutralinos, which is a kind of supersymmetric new particle, uh, which is, has a weight of, uh, of a heavy nucleus, possibly, uh, if two of these particles collide, they annihilate into normal particles, and these normal particles decay into gamma rays in our energy range, and they have a very characteristic signature, uh, which uh, a spectral and spatial signature, uh, which can help to identify them as coming from dark matter annihilation rather than coming from a normal astrophysical process. So seeing, some, seeing something like this would be a, a sort of a major feat. Well, I mean, at this point, it, 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 the, the fact is just we know that there's a lot more dark matter in the universe than there's normal matter and we have not the faintest idea what it is. So it's just understanding what the universe is made of. Uh, and of course, once we see signatures of dark matter, uh, we can, in, in experiments like, like our uh, gamma ray experiments, we can try to reproduce that in the lab, see if it can be made at accelerators, and study it in more detail and really understand what's making up the universe. Indeed, I mean, this is a, a very speculative aspect, but if, if we succeed, if we detect something, of course, it would be tremendous. Uh, the way this works is the following, that uh, on, on very small scales, the so-called Planck scale, space and time may no longer be smooth, but kind of have a bit of a foamy structure. And gamma rays have a very short wavelength, and they start to feel a little bit this foamy structure. And therefore, the speed at which a gamma ray propagates compared to the speed of normal light is modified just a tiny little bit. Now, if we have a, an explosion somewhere out in the universe, millions of light years away, which makes gamma rays of billions of light years away, these gamma rays propagate for a very long time over very long distances. And even a tiny change in the speed of propagation turns into a visible difference of arrival times. So, indeed, one can hope by looking at how gamma rays of different energies arrive, at which times they arrive from some kind of stellar explosion in a far, far, far away galaxy, uh, one can possibly see signs of the speed of light depending on the energy of a gamma ray, which would violate Einstein's laws and would be an indication of something like quantum gravity or a change in the structure of space-time at, uh, at very small scales. But this one must admit is highly speculative I and mean, it would be a, a tremendous feat to observe it, but whether nature has made its laws in such a way that we can observe it with the current instruments remains to be seen.
Yes, indeed, indeed. Well, one should say, of course, I mean, CTA has a, a, a breadth of physics. One is just understanding cosmic rays in our galaxy, understand high energy particles in our galaxies. That's sort of guaranteed science. I mean, we'll do that, we'll learn a lot more, we'll understand a lot more about the sources and the effects of high energy particles in our galaxy. That's kind of the, the, the guaranteed science part. Uh, then there's the increasingly speculative science part, which is detecting dark matter and seeing things like this violation of Einstein's principles. And so I think one of the great strengths of CTA, this new future instrument, is this, this breadth of topics, sort of ranging from important, guaranteed physics output to things which could revolutionize the field if they're detected, but which are very speculative. Yeah, I mean, there, we know that black holes are among the most efficient accelerators of particles in the universe. They convert gravitational energy into particles streaming out of these black holes or emerging from the vicinity of the black holes. Uh, we don't know how that process happens in details. We don't even know what these jets are which come out of black holes and which, which accelerate particles. And so the idea is that gamma, all, all throughout these processes, gamma rays are produced. And so the idea is that gamma rays will help us understanding what's happening in the vicinity of black holes, in particular if matter falls into these black holes. We do see that already uh, with our current instruments, but we cannot resolve the processes in enough detail to really pin down the mechanism. So yes, our, our knowledge about the environment of black holes and how black holes work, how they convert energy, hopefully uh, will be uh, brought forward very much by the next generation of instruments. Well, uh, I mean, we, we, this, this is the next generation of the Trank of Telescope Array, which will have two sites to cover the entire hemisphere. Uh, the northern side on La Palma, on the Canary Islands, uh, on the Roca de los Muchachos, the southern side in, in Chile, near the ESO telescopes. And in fact, I, sh I should say Spain has been, Spanish scientists have been active in this field since a long time. They've been very instrumental in driving it forward. They've been strongly involved in the magic telescope system, which is now operational on La Palma, which has made a number of important discoveries. Uh, and now the fact that, that Spain has offered uh, the, the site on the, on the uh, Canary Islands and is supporting this with funds from the European Commission uh, has really helped to make this possible. Otherwise, I think it's not clear whether we'd have ever been able to, to realize two sites and see the full sky with CTA. So we have a very, very active Spanish community contributing to the construction, contributing to the technology, contributing to the science from, from a number of institutes in Spain. Well, in, in the end, I mean, science is part of our culture. Yeah, it's a little bit like, like music and theater has brought us where we are and defines where we are. And in fact, in particular, in, in times of crisis, I mean, if, if you look in Germany, for example, there have been many locations which, which were heavily industrialized and lost their industrial bases, like, like uh, coal mining and so on. And a lot of these places succeeded by converting to high-tech uh, locations. And so basically, I think science tech and technology is just an important investment to, to ensure the future. And I think astrophysical enterprises, astrophysical observatories are very suited for that because, I mean, science, basically the first science was astronomy. People always try to understand how the sky works. They're fascinated by the night sky. And that still works today. I mean, a lot of the brightest students are, are interested in, in, in astronomical issues. The broad population is interested in astronomical pictures. So it's something which can bring people to science and which can bring people to technology, which also helps developing technologies. Among the products, for example, which we, the instruments which we develop for CTA together with industry, 
will, for example, help to improve medical imaging. There are new photo detection systems which are much better than what we have now. So there is uh, an immediate impact both in education and in sort of byproducts. And I think that that also helps in particular in converting sort of somewhat disfavored regions into regions which by technology uh, can, can uh, build their future. Well, I mean, clearly my, my dream discovery, and I think the one which has the most far-reaching impact, is to really demonstrate that speed of light varies with energy and that something's wrong with Einstein, that we need to marry uh, Einstein's relativity with quantum gravity and possibly hinting in which way such a connection could go. I think that would be the most far-reaching discovery which can be made, but again, it's, it's highly speculative.